Okay, when you communicate, and we talk about not just communicating with how we talk or what we write or leaflets, it's how we act. That's the strongest way in which we communicate. You have to do two things. The first thing you have to do is listen. And we say listen closely and speak clearly. The first is listen closely because they're communicating with you. They're telling you what they want and what they believe. Sometimes it's sitting and talking. Sometimes it's how they act. Sometimes it's whether they support the insurgency. If this father believes strongly enough in the government and our ability to support and those things, he'll put intense pressure on his son not to be in the insurgency. If he doesn't do that, he's also communicating. And our ability to hear in all the subtle ways is critical. If we go down the road and there are IEDs on the road and these villagers do nothing about it, didn't warn us, didn't remove them, they're communicating to us. But we've got to figure out what it is. They're either telling us that they agree with the insurgents or that they're powerless to do anything about it because we haven't been able to protect them. And we've got to understand those messages are coming and, and stop and listen. It's also a sign of respect. And then when we communicate, we need to speak clearly. We don't come in and say something that this is what we want when in fact we really want them to do something different. We don't say agree, we agree with them if we don't. And when we talk about speaking, it's through our actions. I talked about driving down the road. We can't act like we don't respect Afghans and then sit down with them and tell them how much we respect them. It has to be real. We also have to speak with one voice. We can't come in at one level and have our civil affairs person come in and speak nicely to them because they've been trained to do that and give them something and then have our other parts of our force act with arrogance or thoughtlessness because they're going to get a mixed message and they're going to respond accordingly. Afghans need to understand us, and they've been extraordinarily supportive of us over the eight years we've been here, but in many cases, they're confused. In 2001, when we came in, they watched an incredibly precise bombing campaign against al-Qaeda and the Taliban, and they came away with certain impressions, and one of those was, we have extraordinary intelligence, we hit what we want to hit, and we know where it is. Now when we drop a bomb, if we make a mistake, they go back to their previous lesson that we know what's there and we hit what we're shooting at. And they don't assume we made a mistake. They assume that we made a decision to drop a bomb on that group of people. And if it's a group of civilians, it's very difficult to come to and tell them with all the technology we've got and our proven track record that suddenly we make mistakes. And so constant communication and clear communication is key, and honest communication. You see me apologize to the Afghan people when we make a mistake on civilian casualties. I don't find that embarrassing. I find it hurts to do that because it hurts that we made a mistake. But if we make a mistake, I'm not embarrassed to stand up and say that because that's how they should know I feel.